we've seen examples of responsive web design and we talked about a little bit about the recipe for responsive web design and so far we're talking about a situation where there is only one version of a web page. There might be multiple CSS files but there's only one version of the HTML. Um, this, um, this reinforces the notion that you ought to keep as cleanly separated as possible your, your HTML, that is your content, and your CSS, which deals with appearance and layout. All right. Um, so far the recipe has been like this. We're going to be using um, a lot of percentages. Percentages as far as widths, percentages as far as sizes of images. All right. And we are also going to use, um, possibly, uh, or we're going to use a lot of floating of elements, and we're also going to use um, media queries. And a media query is where you can specify the conditions under which a particular CSS file applies. So let's download the example from last time. and look at it with those thoughts in mind. source for this. We have a media query which specifies under which circumstances the one style sheet applies versus the other. Now we in this case we have two. We have a desktop version and we have a mobile version. There's no reason that we could not <clears throat> through media queries, uh, have a third style sheet or whatever. So, you know, not all mobile devices. I, I speak about mobile devices in this class, and you can't see that. I just realized that now. Um, I speak uh, about mobile devices as well that's one kind of thing, where, where really mobile devices includes tablets, includes computers, or uh, uh, smartphones. Um, and these can be a variety of sizes. These can be your old-fashioned flip phones. These can be your smartphones. So when I say mobile, it's not really 100% um, descriptive enough. So in this case, where we have our <coughs> multiple CSS files, and we have a media query to control when this one gets applied, there's no reason why we couldn't have a third style sheet. So, for example, for your very bare bones flip phones, it's going to just be largely just plain old HTML. For a phone with a bigger screen, then we could have another uh, uh, style sheet apply. And we'll do that via a media query. All right? And then finally, for the largest screens, we could, we could apply um, a third style sheet to give sort of the full blown version. Of the site. So these media queries, in the example I'm doing two, but that can be extended to whatever makes sense for the particular situation. If we look at the style sheets, we'll see that 
they mostly all involve percentages as opposed to absolute sizes. So in the desktop version, we specify the nav as having a width of 30% and a section having a width of 60%. In the, in the case of the um, mobile style sheet, everything has a width of 100%, so it extends across the screen. It would be good for you to review some HTML5 stuff, by the way. Um, depending on when you add CISS 2.16, you may have or have not had uh, HTML5. Really, the idea is the same. I mean, it's HTML. Let's look at some of the differences. And one of the differences is there's a much simpler doc type with HTML5. That is the only doc type you need for HTML5. All right? The other thing is there's a whole slew, and for our purposes, this is probably the, the most important thing, there's a whole set of structural tags that can be used to define sections of web pages. If you guys had that class pre-HTML5, then you probably use divs for everything. So you'd have a div with an ID of nav, a div with an ID of content, a div with an ID of banner, and so on. You can still do it that way, but you can get uh, a little bit better, more precise control by using the HTML5 um, additional structural tags that HTML5 provides. And they include, think of these as just different flavors of divs, because these act just like divs. They're block tags, they're meant to hold a section of the page. There's a header tag. The header being what I would have called in previous terms a, a, a banner, like the thing that says, like, you know, this is, you know, Ford Motor Company website and their logo. There is a nav, which is for navigation. There is a footer, which is sort of the opposite of a of a header. It is something that appears at the bottom of the page, like copyright notice, if you have questions, email this person, and so on. There's an article tag. There's a section tag. And there is an aside tag. The article tag is meant to be like an article, a, a, a set of content about one topic. So for example, um, if you were doing a, uh, like in the CISS 232 class, you have a assignment where you do something about a, um, um, uh, PHP, JavaScript, and Ajax. If you had one page that had all three of those things on it, you could say that you had three articles. You'd have an article for the, uh, for the JavaScript stuff. You'd have an article for the Ajax stuff, an article for the PHP stuff. So group of related content that sort of forms a unit, like an article in a magazine or a newspaper. On the side is when you have things that are related, sort of additional information. I'm sure you've all seen in a magazine, there might be the main article about you know, who knows about um, the, uh, you know, the Brown Steelers game coming up. There could be a side, an aside that talks about like one player that was injured or um, one person's dad is going to fly in to see them play in their first pro game, a human interest story or something like that. An aside is where you have an article that is sort of related to another article, but it's sort of a tangent as well. So you can think of an aside as sort of a tangent. It's related to the main stuff on the page, but it's sort of secondary or, or a tangent. A section is, is like a good old generic div used to be. If you're not really sure what it falls into, you can make it a section. Now, the important thing is to remember is, especially with these three things, 
it's not like anyone is going to um, criticize you if, if you say that that's an aside or if I said it's, it's two articles or if you said no, it's an article with an aside. These are pretty clear what their purposes are. The navigation, the header, and the footer. The article section and the side, well, to some degree they can be interchanged. In addition, you still have the old div. Now, the nice thing about this is, is this makes your code a lot cleaner because you don't have to write so many style rules for IDs and classes. In fact, this really limits the number of style rules that you have to write by IDs. Because in the past, what we'd do is we'd write a style rule for our navigation div. Well, since there wasn't a tag for nav, there was only a div tag, we'd have to have an ID of navigation, and we'd write a style rule for it. Now, because there's a nav tag, we can just write the style rule for the nav tag, just like we would for an A tag or an H1 tag or whatever. All right. So keep these in mind. Uh, I'm not going to be too strict in this class about, about this, but it's something you might want to practice uh, to, to gain experience uh, and, and, and knowledge concerning uh, these HTML5 things. All right. So we talked about the recipe, relative everything, floating, media queries for different style sheets. That's sort of the basic recipe for a responsive page. Now, responsive pages can be developed a couple different ways. And we talked about these, we introduced them to you, and we'll talk about them in more detail now. One is called graceful degradation. Where you have a starting point of the full version of the site. You then chip away from it to end up with a mobile version. <clears throat> so in other words, your default style sheet and all that gives you the full version of the site. You then write a second style sheet that includes a media query that applies to mobile devices that takes stuff away. So we take away stuff in the second style sheet and we write an appropriate media query So that applies in the mobile version. <clears throat> we haven't seen an example of this in class uh, yet. And we'll talk a little bit about why in a second here. One of the reasons is it's pretty much the same approach as with the other one, which is progressive enhancement. It just starts at a different starting point. All right? In the notion of progressive enhancement, That's sometimes called mobile first. Here, you start out with the mobile version of the site. And your second style sheet adds stuff to it to come up with the full version. So if we look at the example I had a minute ago, that was an example of progressive enhancement. My base style sheet was very plain, very bare bones. I then had a second style sheet that applied under certain circumstances that added stuff to it, that put background images on it and, and changed the width so that instead of one co uh, column, we have multiple columns, and so on. Either way, if you do it right, you're going to end up with a mobile version and a full version that works. I read a good story about this and why one is better. And I don't think it's in your textbook. It, may, it might be, but I think I read it somewhere else. It talked about the difference between progressive enhancement, that is mobile first, and graceful degradation like this. Let's say you're on one of those cooking contest shows 
where they give you some ingredients and you got to make some things for a party, all right? And let's say they gave you some candy items and your job was to make for your guests plain peanuts as a snack, chocolate covered peanuts, and M&M peanuts, all right? You go about that two different ways, right? Let's say there's a room full of ingredients and you had to make those three things and you could pick whatever ingredients you wanted in their pantry. One way that you could do it is you could go and you could buy, get a bag of peanut M&Ms, right? Boom. There's, you take a third of that, that's your peanut M&Ms. You take a third of it and chip away the candy coating. And what do you end up with? A chocolate covered peanut. All right. You take the other third of the M&Ms and chip away the candy coating and melt away the chocolate. And what do you end up with? Plain peanuts. So in that case, you started with the full version, the most loaded thing there was, a M&M peanut. And you chipped away, you know, in steps to strip away so that you had chocolate covered peanuts, strip away so that you had plain peanuts. The other alternative would be to go and take a bag of peanuts, some chocolate, and some candy coating. And you could take some of them are the peanuts that you're going to serve, some of the peanuts you, cover, you dip in chocolate and serve those, some of them you dip in chocolate then cover with the candy coating and you have the M&M like things. The idea is, is the second approach seems to suggest that you'd get better results. To start with the most simple and build upon it, because if you think about it, if you're going to do that with M&Ms, all right, and why don't, why don't I bring visual aids in the class? Why don't I bring a hammer and some M&Ms in, in the class and we could, we could try this out? My guess is, my guess is if you tried to do that, you wouldn't get all of the candy coating off. You'd slip and let a little bit slide. Or you might let a little bit of chocolate uh, on it. And I think in graceful degradation, you have the same potential for problems. If you try to take away stuff that's there, you might mess up and you might have cause some problems. Whereas this is more straightforward. Now, when do you suppose would be the time to use the technique of graceful degradation? That is, start with the full version of the site and trim it down to be a mobile version of the site. When, you have an old company that already has a website built. Exactly. What if all you had in that pantry was chocolate, was, was uh, peanut M&Ms, right? You wouldn't have a choice to do it the other way. Well, if you were at an existing company and they didn't have the money to create and redevelop their website from scratch, they had a website they were happy with, but it looked crappy on a mobile device, you could go and you could put in some code to chip away at it and so that the full version of the site would work and the then mobile version of it would look a lot better than, uh, than it would have before. As a general rule, if you were developing something from scratch and you had a choice of how to do it, this is probably the better approach. Sometimes, though, we know we don't live in a perfect world and the deck stacked against us, the situation, the project that we're on. So under some circumstances, if you already have a full version and there isn't time or budget to develop a new version of the entire site, you could, through graceful degradation, make sure that you created a mobile site that would work. All right. The other idea of doing a mobile first is sort of a mindset thing. Um, it forces you to really think about what is really essential for your site and to develop a very lean and mean mobile site at first, as opposed to taking a big old giant site and chip away from it and possibly leave stuff in that could be taken out. So this mindset sort of encourages you to be very economical with what you do and to really have your, web, have your mobile version of your site really focused on um, doing this, um, you know, hitting just the essentials first. All right. Here's what I want to do. And you have a laptop, you said. You can use this machine. Not right this second, but in, in, in a minute here. 
Here's what I, I want you to do. I'm going to describe the situation. And I, a very simple, straightforward web page, nothing elaborate. And I want you to create two versions of it. One where you first create the, you know, the mobile first, create a version of it, and then add the features to make a desktop version. Then I want you to try to do the opposite. Start with the desktop version and then chip away to come up with that. And we'll take a look at, at what you come up with and what you struggle with. Um, by all means, this isn't meant to be like a solitary activity. You can talk to each other, you can talk to me, you can show me what you have and, and, and so on. Let me put up on the screen, um, or let me, let me write up on the board what I want the site to look like. And it'll be your job to come up with it. Okay. Both pages. Both pages. Both versions. I want white text. And I want paragraphs to have a red border. All right. So both versions of it should have that. The desktop version should image for the page. It doesn't matter what the image is. Make sure it's a dark image so the white font appears nice on it. It should use Times New Roman as a font. And it should show three images. It doesn't matter what images, just pick three images, and the desktop version should show all three images. And finally, it should be normal size text. All right. The mobile version should be gray, should use Arial as the font, only show the first image, only show one of the images, and have twice as big of font. Twice as big as normal. The five. All right. So, first thing I would do is I'd create just uh, an HTML page that has a dummy paragraph and three images, because that's your content. Then I would go in and create different style sheets using both the method of graceful degradation and the method of progressive enhancement to have these styles or to have these uh, uh, this HTML work both as a desktop version and a mobile version. Okay, I'm going to end the recording now because the rest of the time is going to be more of a discussion, open-ended, 
anyone watching the video, I know Ali is um, not in the, in the class, but you can try this exercise on your own and, and send me an email if you have any questions. All right. Are we clear about what we need to do? All right. Have fun. <laughs>